Ninja Trader Order Flow Trade Detector. What is it and how do you use it? Hello, welcome to Douglas on Trading. Uh, today I'm going to go over the order flow trade detector for Ninja Trader. Uh, it's a pretty cool tool. Uh, we're going to go over the basics of how to use the tool. Uh, I'm not going to go over strategies or anything like that. That'll be kind of up to you of how do you use the tool. Uh, but let's get into it. So if you'll see on the chart, we've got all of these bubbles. This is the trade detector. And basically what it's doing is informing you of areas that have large trading volume. So the first thing we need to do is go into the options and explain exactly what we're looking at here. So if we look at the trade detector options, the first thing you'll notice is base large volume on. And we have three options here. There's consistent bid ask, price, and block. Now if we pull up the help book for Ninja Trader, it gives a good explanation of what each one of these things does. So the to detect areas of significant volume that occurred while the last price jumped between a bid and ask price that stayed the same across multiple bars, you would select consistent bid ask. So the consistent bid ask option basically means that as long as the bid and ask are going back and forth, but the price isn't changing, it's going to accumulate the trades that happened in that time. And if it meets the thresholds that you place within the uh, tool options, then it'll give you a signal, one of these bubbles. The second option is the price option, and that's to detect large volume that occurred at a price level within a bar. So if the bar is moving up and down, whether it's a five minute bar, um, a 2000 tick bar, whatever the bar may be, uh, every time the price is hit within that bar, then it's going to accumulate the volume and it'll give you a trade detector signal if it meets the thresholds that you place. If it switches to another bar, then that accumulation starts over. So after five minutes, the next five minute bar is gonna start over with accumulation to meet the thresholds that you place. To detect a large volume from individual ticks, you would select block. So the block option is basically, uh, I think that's the best option if you just want to pick like a large trade volume from an individual trader, because it's just going to accumulate just for that single tick. And after that tick is done, then um, the accumulation starts over. So I've got three examples of these pulled up. Um, we'll go over that in one second. Let's look at the other options. There's not many, so these are easy to go over. So the minimum volume marker right now, I've got it placed at 100. And that means 100 uh, trades is going to be the threshold for a bubble or a marker. And then the maximum marker size, this is how big you want the bubble to be. The default is 50. I've got it at 100 just to make it easier to see. Uh, you can adjust that up and down base marker size on visible area or session. So uh, the bubbles are relative to other bubbles. So if there is a giant trade, let's say like a 2000 um, trade volume bubble, then a 500 trade volume bubble is going to be smaller than that 2000 volume bubble. But if that 2000 volume bubble is not visible in the session or the visible area, depending on the option that you pick, then that 500 bubble, if that's the biggest bubble on the chart, like if it's a 500 bubble and then a bunch of 100 bubbles, uh, then the 500 is going to be the biggest bubble. And um, you can see that pretty easily when you mess with the, with the chart. If you move it back and forth, you'll see that the bubbles kind of change size based on which ones are visible. Then we've got the colors. So these can be adjusted, of course, but uh, you've got this dark cyan color. Uh, these are the default options for the buys. The red is for, or the crimson is for the cells. And then the outline color and the opacity. Um, those are just kind of basic options. After that, you don't really need to mess with anything else. So since that's the basics, we can get into it now. 
Uh, the first option I have up here is the consistent bid ask option. So I've got it at minimum marker is 100 traded volume and the bubble is set at 100. And just to overview one last time, the consistent bid ask option is going to be the price, uh, well it's an accumulation of trades between a price that doesn't change that's just going back and forth on the bid and the ask. And at these settings it, it kind of looks like a mess. Um, you know, I don't know what strategy you would be using here, uh, but maybe like you get this range kind of across here from like 733 all the way over to about 910. Um, one interesting thing that you could see here is you've got all these large traded volumes going on and then it kind of dies out towards the end of this um, range and then that's when it starts going up. So maybe what happened here is people just weren't as interested in the price down here anymore and therefore it was finally time for the price to move on. But like I said, this is kind of a mess. So let's go and mess with some of the options so you can see what you can do. Uh, so the first thing we could do is we could change the marker size down to 50, which is the default. Uh, let's change the minimum volume marker size up to 500. So we're only looking at larger traded areas. Hit apply. And that might have been too big of a, of a change. So now you don't get much, uh, much bubbles going on. Let's look within one of these bubbles. So if you highlight, if you hover over a bubble, it'll tell you what happens within the bubble. It'll say, in this case, it said there was 196 cells up here versus 548 buys, and the volume was 744. So the price moves up. This was the original high of the day right here at that time. The price moves up past it. You get 548 buys and only 196 sells, but then it sells off. So again, I'm not telling you a strategy here, but just for hypothetical purposes, let's say that you feel like uh, maybe what happened here is the it moved above the high, and so you've got the breakout traders decided to buy, so that's the 548 buyers, um, but then they just got fooled, they got trapped or whatever it was, and the price starts moving down, so maybe you want to take a short there now because you think that that was a signal for uh, some sort of trap, the breakout traders uh, lost in this scenario. So that's the consistent bid ask. Let's go over to the block chart. So the block chart, this is again, uh, this is set at that 100 and 100. And if you hover over these bars, uh, you can see that on the block chart, since it's only one tick, these are always smaller numbers. So the volume never gets much above 270 on this particular chart. Uh, so you might want to have your thresholds uh, set lower. And so again, just to cover what the block is, we go to detect large volume from an individual tick, you select the block option. And so on that same chart, this is the same range. Again, um, this is just hypothetical scenario. So let's say you're watching this range play out. Uh, you don't know what to do. Um, you get these kind of one guy sold big here, it moves down, but then you get a couple big buyers here right at the bottom of the range. Uh, that could be a good signal to say, hey, you know, people are buying at the bottom of this range. Maybe I should move up with it. And then again, when it gets over into this section, there's no big, um, no big action there. So that could tell you something perhaps. Uh, and then it moves up and you get these big seller uh, comes in and maybe he's trying to push it down right there. I don't know. Uh, but whatever happens, this big seller loses and the price kind of jumps. Um, so that could tell you something. Uh, and I kind of like this little section right here actually. So again, hypothetical, but let's say what happened here is this seller came in and he said, you know, um, I think this is ready to break out to the low. So I want to sell here and then he puts his buy stops up here or maybe other people had their buy stops there or maybe they saw that this seller lost 
and so then they start buying in this area but either way you can see when it after it breaks through that big seller and makes it up to this kind of consolidation area it's mostly big buys and then it moves up and I can't say enough just hypothetical um, but that's what you could use the trade detector for if that plays into your strategy now let's go to the last chart so this is the price We'll go over the price one more time. To detect large volume that occurred at a price level within the bar, you will select price. So that means as long as this bar is going, uh, it's gonna keep accumulating as long as it keeps hitting that certain price. You can see how big of a mess this is uh, at the 100 and 100 settings. So that's pretty much uh, absolutely unusable. So let's go over and let's change something so you tend to get larger much larger accumulations on the price setting so we'll set this at a thousand for the minimum marker size and that looks a little more usable uh, let's move to a different section here well, I'll hover over one of these just so you can see. So you can see that they're, the volume is much bigger on this kind of the price accumulation level. So you're getting like 2,000 um, in the volume on these bubbles. We're in the other bubble, like on the block bubble, where it's just one tick. You were only getting like 100 and 200 was like the biggest that you would get. Um, so one thing that uh, you could look at here perhaps is, you know, there's interest as it's going up, of course. But then all of a sudden, when it gets up into this section, price just kind of starts going crazy. There's a lot more volume here. Uh, oftentimes, when after a big move like this, if you start popping in a ton of volume and then this accumulation, it could mean that they're exhausted, uh, at least temporarily. Uh, that they just they kind of shoot all their guns and then and then that's it so you get a reversal or you get a pullback or you get something at that point so um, maybe that's something that you want to use for your strategy uh, but that's the price marker and that's pretty much it it's a pretty simple tool um, you know like I said use it for whatever your strategy happens to be there's another cool tool on here uh, called the um, order flow map let's see what this says the market depth map and so what the market depth map is and I'll go into that in another video is it'll have um, a visual chart of where buyers and sellers are waiting um, you know if they have limit orders placed in the book just sitting there waiting to be hit and then a lot of times uh, you can use the trade detector in conjunction with the market depth map. And so you'll see, let's say in this section where this bubble comes up uh, right here, let's say you were watching on the market depth map that there was a bunch of volume sitting there, whether they happen to be buyers or sellers, and that it moves up and you want to know if action actually happens there because sometimes people are spoofing in the book or they don't intend to trade or they get scared and leave. And so it comes up and say there's a volume bar there and then you see a big trade go off then at the very least you know that some some sort of action happened there you know nothing in trading is a crystal ball or a, a magic wand so um, i'm sorry that this this tool and the, any other tool isn't going to tell you exactly when to buy or exactly when to sell they can only just give you information that you can use uh, to make an educated guess at that point but I hope you liked that video. There will be more on the Ninja Trader order flow tools. If you don't have these tools and you're a Ninja Trader, it's probably because you don't have a lifetime license. You need your own individual lifetime license to have these tools. All right, until next time.